uh, we have uh, Dr. Mayur Kaku here. Uh, when I was looking at how to construct this panel, uh, there is a friend, Sharda, who is sitting here who would also be the moderator for the next panel. And she referred me to Dr. Mayur Kaku. And Dr. Mayur, I looked at your profile before talking to you, which said, Yogic Onco Neurosurgeon. So, it was so interesting. I thought Dr. Mayur has to come for this panel discussion. So, what I want to like uh, hear from you is how do you integrate uh, you know, the whole yoga and your uh, neurosurgery and how do you go about it and what do you see in your world of... You, you asked me how do you integrate it. <laughs> Correct. And uh, I will give you with your own team's example. Please. There is somebody called as Mauli. Mauli, are you there? <laughs> there is some, somebody called as Sumki. Sumki is here. <laughs> Then uh, there is somebody called as Devjani. Devjani, are you here? They are all outside trying to organize the yeah, after yeah. And, party, uh, <laughs> after conference, I wanted to say. Then there is a driver called Santosh. Yes. <laughs> so nicely integrated approach of yours. That, you know, and you, above all you. <laughs> Any, anything they have messaged in a meticulous manner. Even last message was from Sunki at 1 o'clock in the night. And because I am a neurosurgeon, I will be away 24 by 7. That's a different story. So I immediately messaged her, thank you very much. And at 1 o'clock in the night, she has given me the driver's number and uh, which hotel and uh, all these things. So it's extremely commendable that how you care for your panelists or whoever has come, uh, many a number of times we will be struggling with all these informations, but I think you have integrated the idea of care. Cancer is another uh, adverb or adjective, but care, I think kudos to Sanjeevani once again. Yay, Sanjeevani. Wow. Then, now let us come to the yogi kudo surgeon part. So, when we talk about care, we don't, you know, boost our ego in caring for others. And when I think as a neurosurgeon, there are some things which, you know, as a neurosurgeon, I will tell this requires surgery. And this, as a yoga person, I feel this can be treated without surgery. Now, whom I have to listen? That is how yogic neurosurgeon was born. Okay. And uh, like uh, you are talking about uh, yogi Kongo neurosurgery, how, how it is. So I will give you with one example that will you know, highlight everything in a proper manner. Okay. Uh, now a festival is coming for this country. What is that festival? Election. election. Yeah, we are going to have a month long you know, festival of election. I, I urge everybody to vote. Last year on the day of election in Karnataka, I got a election uh, uh, person who you know, they will take care of the booth. So they will be mostly government teachers. So one of the government teachers, she fell unconscious last election 2019. And uh, immediately she was brought to the emergency room. And uh, then we did all the scans. And there was a huge brain tumor which was sitting. And because of that, she has fallen unconscious. So, it was my duty to do surgery. I did the surgery and second or third day she regained consciousness and she started walking. Now, as a yogi neurosurgeon, I generally prescribe yoga before surgery. In unconscious patient, obviously I cannot. So, once she recovered, I told her, Amma, let us start doing yoga. She told yoga is useless, get lost from here. <laughs> Now, I treat patients of different faith, from different countries, from different cultures. It was a shock for me. And she belongs to my religion. And it was like, wow, first time in so many years, I have been repelled from prescribing yoga. 
I did not talk to her. I went out. I asked her husband that, uh, Sir, he and I took means in Canada. I asked, Sir, what happened? He told, Sir, she herself is a yoga teacher for the last 27 years. <laughs> you are all laughing. I was crying. <laughs> And uh, a very useful, uh, you know, adjunct was there with me, this thing, mobile. Immediately when I was looking at the mobile, I was like blank. Honestly, I was blank. Okay. You, you can't imagine when a person is, uh, you know, emotionally so much involved with his way of caring for patients. I was blank. How to deal with this? How to deal with uh, this bitter? I think uh, Jonita, uh, who was, yes. She also had, uh, you know, shooed people away, right? Yes. You know, sudden loss of uh, belief, sudden loss of trust in everything. So I was looking at this mobile and suddenly I realized, wow, my first mobile was Nokia 1100. And in that, you can't upload apps, correct? And in this, yes, you can upload apps, but if suppose this gets filled, then I have to buy a new mobile with new better <laughs> motherboard, with better RAM, with better memory and all these things. So if some of you are engineers, you will realize that there is hardware and then there is software. So if you want a better software, what do you want? A better hardware. And because of my experience in yoga, I knew that there are side effects of yoga. So don't consider yoga and uh, the alternative medicines as just for the sake of taking. You don't take it in a blanket manner. You have to take these things under proper guidance. And I asked her, then I, I went back and I told her the same thing. Amma, let us discuss. We can't run away. You are a senior yoga teacher. You have, you have taught thousands of people yoga. You cannot, just like that, you cannot tell that yoga is useless. Yoga is useful. Yoga is useful. Don't run away from it. And I gave two examples to her. First example was Ram Krishna Paramahamsa. Anybody knows Ram Krishna Paramahamsa? He was a teacher of Swami Vivekananda. Okay. Second one is in our uh, south, there is Tiruvanna Malai, Ramana Maharshi. Okay. Ramana Maharshi had bone sarcoma. Ramana Maharshi had bone sarcoma. Second person, Ram Krishna Paramahamsa had laryngeal cancer. These two examples I gave and I told that did they run away from their yogi practices? Did they run away from their beliefs? She cried. She told, you saved my life. You saved my soul. I don't know what will happen to this cancer, but I am 110% sure that you stitched me back literally as well as metaphorically. And now coming down to the diagnosis, diagnosis was lung cancer. The lung cancer had migrated to the brain. So it is directly this fourth stage. Okay. In fourth stage, today also she is going to vote next month. So this is the power of yoga. All of you know, many of you are medical oncologists, surgical oncologists. You know, fourth stage lung cancer survival is diagnosis is poor. She has survived five years and she is back into yogi practices. Now I was telling about uh, uh, this hardware and software thing. No? So we have to integrate the bodily and the mind practices. Without being judgmental to my fellow your doctors here, but I am I can tell you that our as doctors, no, our healths are also not good. Both physical, mental, social, spiritual healths are not good. We are struggling with our own uh, you know demons. I hope that uh, I gave you the answer of for yogi neurosurgeon how it works in the field. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Very nice.